Amen. I like that last verse that all just read it. But works that God prepared for us in advance to do. So God has His good works for us to do as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, not to ingratiate ourselves to God or not to earn His favor or not to uh, get credit points or anything like that, but He desires that those of us that love Him and follow Him, He's created us unto a good work, a good work of service for Him. I had an interesting uh, opportunity this week. I sat down with someone who wanted to pre-plan a funeral. Pre-plan a funeral. And the service, the way things are going, several of you that are here this morning have also done that. And I may just say, in case, uh, we're not looking for any of you to check out. Okay, that, that's, not, that's not the goal. I want you to hang around. I want you to be productive. But as we get into this message, you can see what this is all about. If anybody felt led to do that, you want to know that your service is going to go a certain way, that certain songs are going to be sung. I have a whole, uh, we've got a whole repertoire of sheets and, and things like that. Feel free to talk to me and we'll sit down and uh, just kind of see what you want to do. What you want to do. So, but as I was having that conversation with someone this past week, it was interesting to note that uh, the topic came up as to I don't know why I'm still here. I just want to go on. And I remember, as I see Ken and Barb Kraft, I remember sitting with the, your mom, Ken, at one point in time when she had just turned 80 or 80, 100, and, uh, and, and she said those exact same words to me. Like, I don't know why I'm still here. I don't know why I'm still here. I just want to go on. I want to be with the Lord. And I think there are different circumstances and situations in our life where even if we're not older or an advanced age, uh, uh, as, as Helen was, as her mom was, that we can feel that way. I mean, I trust that the Lord is my Savior at the age of eight years old. Some of you, you know, younger and, and older, whatever the age was. People have said, you know, well, why doesn't God really trust him as, as our Savior? Why doesn't he just take us up to the heaven at that moment? All of the, the heartaches we would avoid, all of the problems we would avoid, all of the hurt, all of the anguish, all of the things that, as Chris Wilson is fond of saying, all the things of life, right, Chris? It is what it is. We would avoid all those things if God just took us up in the heaven and just the, the joys that we would have with him, the fellowship that we would have with him every single day. There'd be no heartache, there'd be no pain, there'd be no longing, there'd be no fear. We can see why that's attractive to us. Because we're all looking forward to that one day being with him. Being with him not just for a certain period of blocked time, but for eternity. But for forever forever. That's, that's how long our time with the Lord will be. He's gone to prepare that place for us. But while we are here, while we are here, we have a purpose. In this message series in August, by finding God's plan for your life, we're asking that question today, you know, why am I still here? Why am I still here? Whatever age you are this morning, we've got, you know, we run the camera here in age. We've got, we've got 90s down to the kids that were at this altar this morning. We've got a large age group. Why am I still here? What is my purpose? What am I supposed to be doing for God? As Susie had testified just a few minutes ago, there's change in seasons in our lives. There's changing seasons. And, and what we thought we were doing one day can transform into something else in another day. We have no say-so, no choice sometimes we feel. But we always have someone that we can turn to. That being the Lord. Someone that, that will guide us through these circumstances and these situations because He has left us here to minister. And when you say that word minister a lot of times, people will think, of guys and gals like yours truly. A pastor. Uh, a minister. Someone that marries people. Someone that counsels people. But that's not the context we're using the word this morning. And we're using it as a verb, not as a noun. Because you minister to people every single day. Whoever 
you are wherever you're in. You minister to them by sharing. Why doesn't God just take us all home and then we trust Him? Because He needs us here to proclaim His truth. What did Jesus tell His disciples there in Matthew 28? Go and tell. Go and preach. Go and live the gospel so that the world may see you and the world may know that you have something that they need. That's the biggest challenge in our world today, folks, is, is, is letting the world, letting the light of Christ shine in us so that they realize that we have something that they need. On a bit of a negative note, I can't tell you how discouraging it is for me sometimes when I talk to non-believers and they mention someone that I know that I knew was a Christian that I knew was a, 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 a saved, born again child of God as, as, as the saying goes it's right on and it's well, if, if that's what being a Christian is all about I don't want to be it so the testimony whatever it was from that particular person to, to, the, to the non-believer they just don't see the need for the joy of being a child of God. I want us to, to, to project the joy of being a child of God. No, we're not perfect. We all have our inner idiosyncrasies. We all have our quirks. And we all do this and do that. But I want us to know that the Lord is with us. And I want the world to see that. When someone says something, when the name St. John's United Church of Christ is mentioned in this community, I want people to know that, that those are folks that love the Lord. Those are folks that are trying to make a difference. Those are folks that are trying to do the things Alice was reading about, the good works unto the blessings of the Lord. That's what we're after. That's what God's call is. And that's why we're still here. That's why God chose to leave us here so that we can minister not only to others, but minister to Him and the needs that He has given to us here on this earth. He wants you to be a part of that today. He, he knows it's important for you to be a part of it today. So if you're here today, you're, I'm assuming you're living and you're breathing because you're sitting up right at the pew. He has a purpose for you. He has a ministry to fulfill for you regardless of what age you are this morning. He has a purpose for you. It's a responsibility that each one of us as believers have. It's part of the good works that God foreordained that we do. Foreordained. When my kids were growing up, Alice, I would give them chores occasionally to do. Oh, good forbid, right? Give the kids chores to do. And I never gave them chores with the hope or the idea that they would fail at the chore. I tried to reinforce the chore. I tried to give them, if I wanted them to clean the garage, I made sure they had boxes. I made sure they had a broom. I made sure they had a dustpan. I made sure they had a garbage can. Everything that they would need to clean the garage, I tried to provide for them. Because I didn't want them to fail. God gives us everything we need. Because He doesn't want us to fail. And He wants us to minister to others just in the same way with the different tasks He does. He, he equips us for every task, whatever age that we are. Whether we have these little ones, you know, this is a blessing when we have these little ones collect this offering the way that they do for these different, different ministries of the church. One of these kids in the beginning, since this first time, probably ever doing something like this. That's going to, that's important. That's important. And I've talked to, to young adults and to adults who remember being in a Bible school, being, being in a church service, remember doing those things, being in a, a Christmas play, or being against all of these things. They remember those things as adults. They remember doing them as kids. And it brings them back home. It's an excellent choice of song that you may do softly and tenderly. Jesus is called. 
God is always continuously calling us back home because I don't know about you, but, but my tendency is to wander. My tendency is to wander away from God because I think I got this. Whatever I'm going through, that whether it's what Susie you mentioned, I think, well, I can handle this. I can do this on my own. And the bottom line is, I can't. You can't. None of us can. We need God this morning. And we need Him to minister through us in only the way that He can. He wants to use you. And He's foreordained that you do that. You do that according to His will. Although the way you may serve will change over time. We're never called. We're never called on to retire in service for the Lord and can do nothing. I can remember my mom's dad, my grandpa, he passed away in, I think it was 1986. That man had, from 1968-ish to 1986, that man had, I'm not joking here too, and I'm not exaggerating, he had at least 20 major heart attacks. Boom, boom, every time we got, they were, they were in Millsboro, Kentucky, we got called home, the family got called home as kids, you know, like, it, it was almost a, a monthly ritual for a while. Oh, oh, Grandpa's dying again. We got him. As kids, you know, this was, we were inconvenienced, you know, we didn't understand the scope of all of it, but every single time he was, and he would come to cover. It came to as when we heard as kids that Grandpa had another heart attack, we just knew he was going to come back. He was going to bounce back because he always did. He always did. One time I remember Bill coming into that hospital room to visit with Grandpa. Here he is in the hospital room. He's got all this stuff hooked up to him, you know. And what is he doing? He's got a young lady there who is nurse who's taking care of him. And he's sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with her. He's telling her what Jesus means to him. From a hospital. I've seen senior saints. We can't do anything else. We can pray. My mom, my grandmother, my dad's side. She'd gone totally blind. And answer the phone, Jesus loves you every single time. The seasons of life change. She was a woman that would go and go and go. My other grandfather with a heart attack, she was a man that would go and go and go. But the seasons of life change, but God continued to use them. Because He wants to use you. He wants to use me this morning. Finding God's will, finding God's plan in your life. Is an ongoing, daily, daily battle. Our goal is to serve and serve God with our whole being, reflecting the love of Jesus for who we are. And our worship of God is, is, is strengthened as we edify Him, as we love Him. And He will equip us, Susie, in whatever season of life we find ourselves, if we avail ourselves of His power. Your entire life, from start to finish, is meant to be an act of service to God. As Alice was reading for us there in Ephesians chapter 2. For some people that are living for their own happiness, for their own goals, and for their own desires, those will always bring us ultimate disappointment. If we realign our thoughts, if we realign our goals, we pursue the things God wants us to do. We pursue those works that He wants us to do as believers. He's foreordained that we do them to minister to others and uplift His name before the world. If we do those things, we'll never be disappointed because Jesus never fails. He never fails. You will have the satisfaction of knowing You've done exactly what God created you to do every step of the way as we walk. Do you know Him today? Is He your Lord and Savior? Do you know why He's left you here to minister? Do you know what He wants you to do? 
seek Him, talk to Him, study His Word. As the seasons of our lives change, those plans may change too. But you can still be effective, you can still be spoke, outspoken for the Lord, and you can still be successful for Him. He wants you to be part of His plan each and every day. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much.